announcement or the arrival, as it, as it were, of the Omicron variant of the COVID-19 virus. And I think for, for that reason and the, and, the, and, the, and the warning from the World Health Organization and the fact that the Omicron variant of the virus is still to be something of an unknown, I don't think the Federal Reserve are actually going to pursue the policy of ratcheting up the tapering process. Let's just keep in mind the fact that the, the Federal Reserve waited for months and months to actually announce tapering. It was announced in, in October to begin in November. They, they deliberately avoided announcing it at the Jackson Hole Symposium in late August. And even though I think the US economy is moving in the right direction, and I don't actually predict that the Omicron variant will be a huge disruptor to the US economic recovery, I think it'd be a bit premature for the Federal Reserve to ramp up the rate of tapering one month after the very process began. You mentioned about the high levels of inflation. It seems to me as if the actual beginning of the tapering process itself, which started last month, was a sort of a reaction to the high tapering, to, to the high levels of inflation. Yesterday, we saw extremely high levels of PPI, producer price index, that ratcheted up again. That's typically a, for, a, a, a leading indicator for CPI, because let's face it, if the costs are increasing at the factory level, they're more likely to be passed on to the consumer down the line. So I think we're gonna, we are going to continue to see high inflation for the time being. But let's remember, the Federal Reserve has said for, eight, for months and months, inflation is only transitory, which proved out to be not, not, quite, not, not, quite, uh, not quite correct. I just don't think they're going to be as quick to look to adjust their policy again. Because let's, let's face it, it took us months and months of quite good economic indicators, high services numbers, strong manufacturing and falling unemployment to begin tapering to begin with. You know, given the fact that you're saying that uh, the Omicron concerns may loom large and the Fed may not do anything, I want to understand from you how important will then be the communication today that the uh, that uh, the U.S. Federal Reserve will give today to the markets in, in terms of giving some clarity on what the future will hold, what kind of data the, the U.S. Fed will look at and the kind of recovery that is really taking taking shape. The key for the Federal Reserve tonight will be if they decide not to, to ratchet up the rate of tapering because of the fact that, that the Omicron variant is an unknown. The key, the key point of the communication would be to state we would consider uh, tapering the bond buying scheme at a faster rate if it not were for if it, if it were not for the Omicron variant. They don't want to give off the impression that they made a mistake to begin with by tapering uh, last month. And they certainly don't want to give off the impression that they're petrified of the Omicron variant of the virus. So it's a fine line be between saying something along the lines of, we're, we're, we're happy with the tapering so far. We're happy with the economic indicators we've seen recently. And the most recent non-farm payrolls report, although the headline number was just dis very disappointing, the unemployment rate fell to 4.2%, a new lowest level since the pandemic began. We've seen strong ISM manufacturing and services recently, but the Federal Reserve had to hammer home the point that we probably would have began tapering at a faster rate if it were not for the Omicron variant. If they start to shy away from it and give off the impression that they're held ransom to this new, new strain of the virus, then we could see a fairly large pullback in the US dollar. Uh, and if anything, we could actually see probably a push higher in stocks. You know, before I let you go and quickly, because we're running out, uh, what is the kind of outlook that you hold for the markets come 2022? I think we're going to see a similar situation to what we saw in early 2021 in that the, 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 the pandemic and the, the lockdowns and the concerns about new strains of the virus will still be in circulation. But as time goes on, particularly as, as the Northern Hemisphere moves out of winter towards spring, that should, in theory, help with, this, with the spread of the virus. And, the, and therefore, the fears of the virus should begin, to, uh, should, should begin to decline. With that, we should see continuation of the broader rally seen in stock markets particularly in airline stocks, which let's face it, people will be looking towards uh, Easter holidays uh, and, and summer holidays. Also, the hospitality sector has had a difficult time in recent months and even recent years. That's also an industry which is likely to benefit as well uh, as we go, from, as, as, as we go from, from winter towards spring and summer. 
All right, David, appreciate you taking your time out and speaking with us today.